Bitcoin halving, right? So I want to talk a little bit about the Bitcoin halving for people who don't understand it, don't know what it is, because it's very important that you understand this. Very important. For those of you who have followed me for three, four years, we know we went through the whole cycle once. And I, I like to do that with people because once you go through an entire cycle from beginning to end, it's almost like the wool is pulled back from your eyes. Now you understand how the world works, like Stephanie just said. You understand that this is a cycle that's been happening for hundreds of years. They use the media, the power, the, the whatever, the, whoever controls the information flow to trick you into selling your assets or forgetting about something while they buy it back up in accumulation phase and then sell it back to you in this distribution phase. And then we, we always wonder in societies, why does the rich continue to get richer? And then we got all these reasons why, because they hold us down or they don't do this. It's two reasons, information flow and market cycles. The market cycle pulls money from people in poverty every so often. And the, the, it, it collects into the wealthy uh, 1% because it's information flow. They use two things against you. They use information. They use your fear and your, your greed against you, your emotions against you. They use those two things to siphon money from the middle class and the poverty, people in poverty, to the top 1%. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It was a time that the CEO of a company in the early 2000s may only made like 20 times more than the average man. So if the average man, let, let's say he made $50, the CEO of a company would make like a million. And that would be, you know, that would be good. You know, 50,000, average person makes 50, CEO makes a million. That's, that's, that's good. But now the CEO and owners of companies can make hundreds, thousands of times more than the average person. Thousands and thousands. Of, so the average CEO of a Fortune 500 company makes more than the average person the first day of work on January 1st. That day, he made, before lunchtime, he made more than the average man made his entire day at, uh, year at work. And that's because of information flow. And that's because of emotions, right? It's because, and I'm not saying each individual person, no, but I'm saying the whole system, right? Because each individual person is different, but the whole system. Let's move on. So like I said, is, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bitcoin having. So like I said, every four years, and, and this is the thing, this is the thing I like about Bitcoin is that the next question people are going to ask me is that how do I know when the cycle starts, when it begins, whenever? But it, it, has, to, it has to do with, you just have to be able to see the environment and then judge where you're at in the cycle, right? Like right now, we could be at the beginning of a bull cycle in the stock market, but it's not 100%. You know, we have to kind of, it's almost like you using educated guesses to figure out where you are. And then most of the time, if you do it right, you'll figure out where you are in stocks, real estate or whatever, if you know what you're doing. The thing I like about Bitcoin is that there's an event that happens every four years that explicitly starts the cycle. It's been happening since the inception of Bitcoin. And once this event happens, you got six months, there's a run up in Bitcoin, 18 month run up, there's a drop down, then there's a lull period for a year and a half, and then it starts all over again. It's been happening since the inception of Bitcoin. And we predicted it. If you guys, some of you guys been with me for two, three years, we made an incredible amount of money in 2020, early 21, by predicting this exact cycle. Now, it wasn't hard to do, it was because we understood how the Bitcoin having works. Now, for people who don't know, what the Bitcoin having is. Also, before I continue, if you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. I'll give you guys a second. Somebody says, uh, Roberto says, I've been waiting my whole life for AI. Me too. So we're, we're together in that. I've been waiting for it my whole life too. So uh, I've always been interested in this stuff. But, Back to what I was saying is uh, every four years, there's a halving in Bitcoin. Now, the reason why this happens every four years, it's not actually on years. I like to say that because somebody come in there and say, oh, Armando, it's not years. It's technically not years. It's block time. But it happens every four years because the block time ends up being exactly around four years, roughly. Uh, so 
The reason why this happens is because the creator of Bitcoin wanted to create scarcity in the system. So he said, I'm sorry, he says, how do you create scarcity? Well, the way you create scarcity is by cutting the supply of something. For example, if we woke up in the morning and you saw on the news that they were going to cut the supply of oil coming from the Middle East, gas prices would skyrocket, right? It's pretty simple supply and demand. You cut the supply of something that's being created or coming out of the ground or whatever, you're going to affect the price. So he says, well, I want to make a system in which every 10 minutes, Bitcoin are created through a process called mining. So in every four years, I'm going to cut that supply by half. Go back to 2020, it was 12 and a half. Right now it's six and a quarter. In March of 2024, it'll be 3.125. So why is this important? It's because every single time Bitcoin is halved, the price is skyrocketed. Every single time, roughly four to six months after that event happens, the price skyrockets. It's not immediate. It's not going, the next day it doesn't happen. It normally happens a few months afterwards because there's a supply shock in the system. All of a sudden, you can't, there's not enough Bitcoins being sold. There's not, so the price has to adjust to account for that, right? So I want to share with you a chart. Now, I spent time on this chart because I want to really show you guys, right? Because a lot of people say, Armando, you gave up on Bitcoin. You gave up on crypto. Now, I didn't give up on it. It's just nothing to talk about no more. (laughs) Like what? It's gonna be in a lull until March, or until middle of 2024. Not much is gonna be happening. There's not gonna be much excitement. It's gonna be roughly the same. It's gonna be rent, what we call range bound between two prices, probably twenty thousand and forty thousand. So it'll go up and come back down. Go up and cut. That's what happens in in bear markets in, in the crypto winners we call them. So it'll go up and everybody get excited and goes right back to where it was. It continues to do that for almost a year. It will, it will, I believe it's going to do that until the middle of 2024, maybe autumn of 2024. It'll go up to 25,000. Everybody get excited and go right back to 20. That's, that's what happens in crypto winners because there's nothing that keeps, the, the supply is the same. So there's nothing really keeping the price from not going, you know, not, uh, not dropping back to where it was. So it'll be range bound. Between two numbers, I think 20 and 40 into 2024, early middle or late 2024. So I made this chart because I wanted people to see this, right? It's called the halving chart. So yeah, you should have audio now. Sorry about that. So like I said, is that we're back um, on, uh, we're going to look at this chart because I want you guys to know what happens here. And I tried to make it like color coded so we can understand it a little bit better. Uh, so ne- I'm getting better every week. So next week I'm going to make it, I'm going to make sure that we don't have any of these problems. I may just hire somebody to come on the, if you guys know anybody in Tampa that's free from nine to 11, now let's say eight to 10, eight to 11 on, uh, that knows no, they can be an assistant, 8 to 11 uh, on Sunday nights. Let me know. Uh, there should be audio now. You should have audio. You should have audio. Yeah. You should have audio now. Uh, let me know if you have uh, guys have audio. Okay. So, like I said, is that if we take a look at this chart, uh, if you look at the at the beginning, right, November, let's go, we're going to go from left to right. We're going to talk about the events that happened. Now, the black lines we see are the halvings. 
And this is just the last, the previous two halvings that happened in Bitcoin. In the background, we have the, we see the chart of Bitcoin, the price movements. We see the uh, price on the left side. Uh, and I, 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 I specifically put out the events uh, when, what, when I put out the Bitcoin peaks. That's what these red arrows are. The peaks before the fall. The, the, bar, the bar graph at the bottom is the days of the bear market, days of the bull market, days of the bear market, days of the bull market. And I consider what I consider the bull market is the price passing the previous high. A bull market could be expanded by another definition, but that's what I used in this chart. So this is what I used in the chart. The days, the green area at the bottom are the days that it was past the previous high. Right. Go back to November 29, 2013. Bitcoin hit an all time high of 1242. Now, there was a huge event that happened during that time. And it was a, the MT, the Mt. Gox, MT Gox uh, hack. When I think 10 to 20 or 30 percent, it was a big number of Bitcoin got hacked in that system. That was the it was the only exchange on the planet. And it got hacked. Right. And like hackers stole like $50 million worth of Bitcoin, which don't seem like a lot today, but it was a lot back then with the price of big. It was a lot. You know, it was a lot of Bitcoins back then. Um, and, and a lot of people thought Bitcoin was done. It was over. It's never coming back. Right. So Bitcoin, it took 133 days for Bitcoin to crash down to uh, $340. Right. And then it stayed in a bear market for three, almost four years, 1,400 days in a bear market. It took to 2017 before it passed the previous high again, right? And one thing you'll see about these numbers is that they're getting shorter every time. That's something that's gonna happen too. So to uh, March 3rd, 2017, we passed the previous high. So remember the Bitcoin halving was right before that July of 2016. So we look at that as about nine months after it hit a high, it hit the, it passed the previous high, nine months after the first halving, right? So then seven months later, eight months later, Bitcoin reaches an all-time high of $19,000. That's a roughly a third, 12, 13 time return, right? And then there was a crash again. And then it took a thousand days roughly to reach its high again, which happened again in uh, November, 30th, 2020, we all remember that. Bitcoin passed the previous high again. So it took about a thousand days, right? And then it had a bull run after that for about 345 days. But remember that halving was May 2000, May 11th of 2020. May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Seven months after that, it reached its high again. Seven months, right? And then it goes all the way up to 67,000, starts going back down again. So right now, when I made this chart, which was about a month ago, it was, we were like 410 days into the Bitcoin bull, uh, bear market, right? So we're roughly right now, probably about roughly 500 days in. So we got about 300 more days, maybe 400 more days from today of the, bear mar of, of the Bitcoin bear market. About 400 more days left. So uh, can you guys hear me? He claims somebody says they can't hear me. Now the sound went off. The sounds there. You guys can't hear me. Yeah, I don't know. Some people said they can't hear, me, but the sounds there. 